Hi, it's Dev from The Art of Heart, and we're here in the men's room, and today we're fortunate enough to be joined by Zan Perion and Hans Kalin, so thank you guys for joining us. And uh, some of you may be familiar with their material, and if you're not familiar, um, hopefully this is going to serve as sort of a launch pad to, to discover some new concepts and some new ideas. And uh, I want to take a second by asking you guys first, we all know the seduction community, and, and we've heard questionable things in the way of ethics, as well as uh, the ambitions. and you guys are somehow different. Um, to me, it seems like a more inspired way of thinking, or a passionate way of thinking, but I'm curious to hear you guys elaborate on the Ars Amrata movement and what it means. How long has this seduction community been this thing? I don't know, maybe 15 years? I mean, as, as we know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, good things about it and a lot of bad things about it, in that it, it, uh, it arose on the earth simultaneously you know, in, you know, uh, as opposed to like one place and there's no hierarchy to it. Um, to meet a real need that men are feeling really completely disconnected today. And from the very beginning, I've, uh, I have always been trying to advocate a, a more simple or more uh, natural type of approach to the way we interact in, with women and, you know, our, our, our conversation with women. And, uh, and so our whole program, the Arza Murata idea, the whole, which is our whole concept, which is everything that you know, embraces everything that we talk about, is uh, more a simple message of, of authenticity, which is the foundation of it. Because I've always said, honesty is the greatest aphrodisiac. So. It's, it's, the question is different, though, I think. In, in, if you have a community that maybe where the basic question would be, how can I get more women in my life? Then our basic question is more a question about connection. How do we truly connect with someone? How, how, and this we say as men, how can how can I be a woman's fantasy? And so it's a different question with different answers, and I would almost say it's a, a different subject. Yeah, essentially, what we're talking about, uh, we never ever comment on lifestyle. For instance, if somebody wants, if some guy wants to get a girlfriend, or he wants to get multiple girlfriends, or he wants to get threesomes, or he wants to uh, get married, or he wants to find the one. Or it, We never make a comment on that whatsoever because, uh, and we never, it, it's completely not in our purview of what we're trying to say, because uh, the foundations of what we're trying to say, the concept of curiosity, of aliveness, of, of um, uh, the whole celebration that we speak about celebrating women, uh, Will is that will underpin all any of those? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what the man's goal is. I never judge it. I never consider it. I never, we, we, never, we don't talk on that level at all. Uh, uh, underlying it all is the concept that we all want connection, and uh, authenticity is our true seduction, true seductive self. So, and it doesn't matter what your goal is. Mm -hmm. Honesty will will take you, will, will allow all your goals to happen. So. And it's because of that that it's a message for both men and women too. It's the same principles. Yeah. Since we're talking about connection, because we what we see everywhere in the world is that both men and women exactly want the same thing. If if, if you go underneath all the layers, they all want to be authentic and be loved for it. And so we sit in those questions. I would always say it's a completely yeah. different thing. Yeah. Okay. And we've been doing seminars for women uh, as much as men yeah. in the last few years. Um, and it's foundationally, it's the same thing. It's all like we have this disconnection on the earth today, you know, with Facebook and all that, you know, we're so hyper wired and so hyper connected and yet we're more disconnected than we've ever been in history. You know, we date online. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, there's a, there's a, a, a strong need out there yeah. for, a, a clearer message of how can we really, how can we interact in a really meaningful, alive way? And so. It doesn't matter if we're talking to men or women. We're yeah. kind of saying the same thing all the mm -hmm. time. So, and it's yeah, it's it's not only a question. We give the answers. Like, basically, what we're saying is that uh, we think of what do we have to do, what do we have to say to be more attractive. And what we're trying to say, both to men and women, is that your authentic self is your attractive self, and it is in you having the courage to be completely authentic into this world and give one hundred percent to this world that you, you create the possibility for you to, to connect with someone else who does the same thing. And so it's, it's, it's a different question and it's a very simple answer. And we, sometimes we cannot believe it is true. And so that's, that's basically all we do is to say that, <laughs> that your authentic self is your attractive self. 
It's the only thing that is attractive about you. Mm -hmm. You being authentic. So, so let me ask you this, then. Do we go out to the nightclub because we don't have that sense of everyday connection on the street? Or do we add a bunch of people on Facebook and converse that way because even subconsciously we may be missing that from our lives? You know, it is, this is what I think. The, the, the subject of how we interact, men and women, is the, is the most interesting subject on earth. In every group, we were just in New York City a couple of days ago, and, and in every group, it is the number one subject. It, it floats to the top of every conversation if it, if it arises. And I don't think that, um, I think people would go to clubs or that kind of stuff because they're going to where uh, they think that they're going to meet somebody who might be single. How did we used to do it? We used to go to church. We used to meet people in our in our in our neighborhood, or we go to church, and we, we've lost all that all, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we, in other words, we don't gather mm -hmm. anymore. We don't gather together anymore, especially with our computers and stuff like that. We, and, and and so we've lost some kind of element of sub communication, mm -hmm. which is, is a huge part of my message is sub communication. Instead, we're like uh, we give a bunch of we transfer information to each other uh, remotely, and then we make decisions about that. And we've lost the art of flirting. We've lost the art of, of sub-communication. We're talking to, to these people over here and we're communicating with this girl with our eyes. We've lost it. And, and so now we, 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 I don't think anybody's doing anything wrong. They're just really trying to find yeah. a way to, to, to connect. It's like uh, every day some guy turns 18 or 19 and every day some guy gets divorced. And those two, those two guys are equivalent. A guy might be 35 years old, been married for 15 years, and uh, uh, captain of his domain. He might have industries and cars and lands and, and all this kind of stuff. And, then, and now he gets divorced or something falls apart in that direction, and he's completely lost. He's just is like, what do I do? Online dating? Uh, go to the bar? I don't know. They don't know what to do. So, Our, our disconnect is both uh, like the thing that makes us uh, perplexed to see that, but there's also comfort, a complete comfort in seeing, like you say, you say Facebook, that people really, really crave that connection and they keep looking for it no matter what. And that's why it, it's, it's such an important message, message, I think, because that's exactly trying to give answers to those questions and trying to, 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 to give answers to that, that craving. So. Yeah. And, you know, men are waiting for women to stop being so mean to them. It's true. They're like, okay, it's the women's fault. And women are waiting for men to show up. Mm -hmm. And and so there's this this huge layer of like it's the other side playing the games, but we're all in this together. And mm -hmm. nobody is nobody is uh, nobody's to be nobody is to be blamed. It's like uh, society and like I, I never go into cause and effect. Okay, well this happened, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know feminism came in, and 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 you know I you never we never think that we just say here we are today. Mm -hmm. What is possible going forward? That's it. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, because you like Sam says, we don't blame men, we don't blame women, but we do say to everyone, you're to blame if you're perpetuating the games, because yeah. you, each one, both men and women, in their relationships, they do have the power to do something different from this day forward in their relationships to say, okay, before it was like this, and from now on, it's different. Yeah, and it's 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 as easy as announcing that. And tide rises all the boats, you know, and 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 it's like. Like women ask us all the time, if we're more authentic and we're more open, which is the, the attractive qualities that women have is like their openness and their ability to um, to shine in that in that way, men will take advantage of it because and it's true mm -hmm. because if if both sides don't elevate at the same time, then uh, women can get hurt if they're trying to be more authentic and open and, and if they don't put up their shields to be protective from the, from the men out there. And and it's and men are the same thing. It's like if men are really trying to be uh, express their real aliveness and their real delight, because men have delight, and they want to show that, but they can't. They have to be aloof and cool, because otherwise women go, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, you know, it's a, a yappy little lap dog that'll follow mm -hmm. me around. So uh, uh, our, our whole thing is like we're all in this together, and we're gonna get out of it together, and we're completely devoted to it. We think it can change. So. It's one thing to say to a guy, just, just be open, yeah, but yeah. sometimes some of the most simple concepts are the most abstract, yeah. especially if you don't know or if you're coming from a, a different system of thought. So in terms of things that are actionable, what is, I mean, what, what, how do guys start? Announce it. 
Okay. Announce it. Make for yourself because it's all a decision. It's a decision for yourself to do something different from now on. And then you speak it into the world. You announce it. You announce it to the girl in front of you. you before you may have played games and you've been hurt. And from now on, let's not do this here. Let's do something different. And now it's now it's out there. And now you can work with that. And it's to me that's completely actionable. Like to 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 make a decision and to announce it to the world. But you know, before like. We hear guys all the time say, well, I got this problem and this girl did this and, and what should I do about this? And we never ever get into the micromanagement of that type of thing at all because uh, there's bigger questions to be asked. Mm -hmm. Not like, how can I get this girl to text me back? And what should I specifically should I say? We don't ever touch that because it's more like, what do you want as a man? What, how do you want to occupy your space on this earth? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. how, what is the nature of what makes a man attractive? And so that's the only thing we we try and describe and or trying to, to understand for ourselves like i want to know it too and uh so that's all we talk about and uh in a practical sense i think if me i think the, the, the secret is this awareness awareness is curative and i think if men just pause and say okay i'm 32 years old i'm at this stage in my life and it hasn't i haven't had the, the kind of relationships uh, that i want with women and if they just pause and, and examine just one little thing, which is, who am I? What do I want? And, uh, and just stay in that question for the rest of your life. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want my life to look like? You don't have to solve it. You don't have to find the answer for that. You just have to keep asking that question over and over and over again to yourself. What do I want in this interaction with this girl, in this marriage, in this relationship? What do I want? What do I fundamentally want? And I think our problem is or the practical thing we're looking for. Guys are looking for like the solution, how to get her panties off in three easy moves, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think the really practical thing is to pause your life and say, what do I want? And, and, and you, may, you might not have answers right then. You may never have the answer ever, but the question is, is the awareness of the question. Awareness is everything. Just by being aware, like I'm not as interesting and dynamic as I want to be with women, that awareness itself is the answer. Because it'll it'll change the way you subtly see yourself and the way women subtly see you. Knowing a little bit about your sort of minimalist, if, if that's fair to call it that, or traveling lifestyle, uh, I see a distinct parallel between stripping away these unnecessary layers, mm -hmm. but also the way that you live is, you know, carrying with, uh, or traveling with just to carry on and, and those types of things. It's simplicity, but more so it's essentially just what you need. Yeah. With that in mind, when it comes to projecting yourself to women, um, or, or just showing up and saying yeah. hello, it's simple, right? And less I found is more. that, yeah, less is more, right? Yeah. And, and, and you'll never run the risk of, of, at least in my case, I find that I'm never misinterpreted in the way of they're concerned that they shouldn't text or that they have to be aloof yeah. or anything like that. It's just kind of like, hey, here I am. We, let's just yeah. continue, right? But I'm curious as to how you got to that point, because you told me a story a long time ago about uh, leaving home and, and yeah. when you met Sam, and I'm curious if you might elaborate on that. Well, first of all, I want to say it's true, it's, simp it's uh, simplifying, simplifying down to what you're truly passionate about, simplifying to that question that Zan just said, who am I today, what do I want my life to look like? Anything that doesn't look like it, renounce it, get rid of it, mm -hmm. and, and it's it's... It's exactly what I did. I was I was teaching at university and in Brussels and, and playing soccer and I, I liked what I was doing. I was I was I, I loved it. And and but when I started talking with Sam, I I instantly discovered a, a much higher passion, something I love way more. And there was not there was never a question at all like that I would give up anything that I would was doing. And I wasn't afraid or I was it was just simple because I knew. I really, really liked it, and I was listening to my God. I would never, ever question it. And so anything that didn't look like uh, spreading that message, for example, or, uh, or having adventures, I, I had to get rid of. I mean, and so I got rid of the house and of the TV and everything, and just stripped down to what, what is needed. It's certainly, a, that. It's certainly a, a, I can feel it as a trajectory in it, in that I, I was... My story is very quickly is I was born and raised in northern Canada in the forest in the wilderness with nothing, no money of any kind, and like simple, simple, simple. Mm. And then I, you know, I, I went off into the world and, and, 
And I, I could feel myself simplifying right back down to that, to that essence of what I used to love when I used to walk through the mountains and like be excited. That, that fascination, mm -hmm. simplicity re returns that to you because we're, we, 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 you know, we'll, we'll, we will sit and we will watch a sitcom for half an hour because I need my me time because I work so hard today. Mm -hmm. We'll watch a half an hour insipid television show and yet we won't take that same 30 minutes to sit and, and, and sit in our, in our, in our heart and say, who am I? What do I want? Because we've been taught since we were little, little kids, you can't be doing nothing. You're wasting time. And so we fill up all of our available evenings and time with things and appointments and, and taking these lessons and doing this kind yeah. of stuff. And we never have time to just pause. And, and so like, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to try and say is like, there's a trajectory back to the simplicity in the way we talk to women. It's a very simple thing. I'm, I'm a man or a woman and I like that. It's a great thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to express that. In the way we live our lives, in in uh, and so there's a great clearing, yeah, and it feels fantastic. And it feels like everything's possible when you just clear all the clutter. You know, sometimes sometimes we we uh, we feel that we need change in our life. We can feel it. We can feel we need something different, but we don't know how it looks. Right? We don't know what we want. But then sometimes we we, we clearly know what we want, but it looks so far off and so distant. That we we're like we're like paralyzed and we cannot even take the next step. Yeah. And and what we're trying to say is that you do not need you do not need to know the end result. You do not need to know uh, the end goal. There's no end goal to Russia, and 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 you do not need to know uh, a plan how to move forward. All you need to know, all you need to know, all you need to do is to ask yourself that question: Who am I today? What do I want my life to look like? Which is a, a question of your passion. What are you passionate about? And your passion will instantly give you the next step. And that's all you need to know, the next step. Because as soon as you take that next step, the next step will show up. And so it's like, it's like Zan says, it's a, tra a trajectory. It just, it, as soon as you have the courage to do that, to listen to your gut and your passion, the next step shows up and you take it and you take it and you take it. And it's only after time when you look back and say, whoa, a lot happened. Mm -hmm. And there's no plan. There's no... Uh, uh, five step plan to, to get at a certain point. Mm -hmm. There's not even a place to rush at. It's just staying close to what you're really passionate about and, and, and never settling for anything less than that. How many guys are putting so many layers on them, on themselves? Like, I have to learn how to be a great storyteller and I have to learn how to be funny and I have to learn how to be... And we add, we're trying to layer all these layers so that we can be more of a dynamic person as opposed to just stripping away all the masks and all the the uh, the, we're trying to be cool and aloof and all of that kind of stuff and just strip it back down to us being our, our natural, you know, blurting self guy, just like, you know, just in the moment saying, this is what I, this is what I like. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want with that information, girl, because I like it. I like you and I want to say it. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a stripping away, I think, more and, and metaphorically, physically, for us, for everything. It's like, yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely, I, I think it's profound. And one of the things that I really like about the message is it's, it's a call to action, really. And, and more so than that, it's accountability, right? It's kind of like once you hear it, it's kind of like, oh, man, it's in my head. Am I going to respond? Right? And to deny that response, if that's something that you believe in, I think is, you know, uh, really the only way you can fail, right? To deny that ambition yeah. that you have. Um, what have you seen? I'm curious because you, you've obviously talked to a lot of males and females. What have you seen in the way of people hearing the message, but, but not being able to take those steps? I mean, what, what becomes of them? Or You know what? What we don't do is self-help, and we don't hold hands. We're not cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying to guys, there, 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 and patting their hands. You know, you'll be okay. Um, we have a very strong message, and our message is there's no more time for self-help. There's no more time for that. It's time mm -hmm. to stand on the earth, and let's go, because we're going in this direction, and we need we need... Women need men to show up. Yeah. yeah, we're not babysitting, and it's like inviting them into a, a higher standard. And yeah. the right people will show up, and 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 people who don't accept the invitation, that's okay too. You guys used an analogy, uh, or I guess a metaphor, for uh, not so much the courtship process, but your interactions with women, and you equated mm -hmm. it to being similar to dance. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. curious if you could elaborate on that, because I think that, for me at least, being aware of the message, it really sort of characterized it and gave it sort of a new feel, and uh, again, it's simplicity, but I think that a lot of the audience might take that away and, and be able to sort of characterize yeah. it in their own ways, if you want to elaborate. Yeah. I, I think that the dance metaphor is profound. 
in Toronto here, you guys, there's there's guys who are teaching, trying to teach the the concept of the way men and women communicate, sub communicate, connect uh, through dance, and uh, I, I think it's a, a fantastic thing. I think if a man wants to understand women, he should take up dance lessons. I really do, like traditional ballroom type dance. When I was in Montreal uh, a little while ago, I met a Ukrainian girl, beautiful Ukrainian girl, who grew up in the streets of Argentina. And so she's a, she's a, a profound tango dancer. And, and I went to, she took me to the tango and I was watching her and the other women dance with the men. And it was, and, and, and my eyes were open. I'll say that. Uh, I saw there contained in the way that, the, that these men and women were dancing the tango, everything. The, all of life is contained. What I, I saw all of life contained in the tango. If, uh, if men would study that, they would not they would need dating seminars, they would need books, they would need nothing. If they would just go and, and in, even in a spectator mode, to observe the tango, the way the, the men, you know, extend their hand in invitation. There's no controlling, there's no trying to take, there's no asking for anything. There's no, no possibility of, of, of that kind of thing. It's just a hand in, in extension. And if it's accepted, then the men subtly, but, but firmly lead. And the, and the men uh, are leading and their hands are high, confident, high like this. And the women, their eyes are closed. And they're feeling it and, the, and they're moving in complete synchronization. I, I could go on about it because I think it's beautiful. Mm. When I first stumbled across the message, one of the things, or, or two things actually that really resonated with me um, was the notion that women are not to be, I guess, acquired. Or, mm -hmm. or like it's not about how do I get the woman, how do I conquer the woman. It's about sort of understanding that uh, as, as you put it, Zan, they're already your women. Uh, yeah. Your thoughts? Um, I've been saying it for years that all my girls, and, I've, and, and I have that sense. Like, how many times have I been talking to a guy? I remember a very specific time in Chicago where there was a guy that I was talking to, and uh, we were at an at a, at a empty club, but there were some people dancing, stuff like that. and these... These women came and asked us to dance, and they were not the most attractive women, uh, physically attractive. And, uh, and they asked us to dance, and we danced a little bit. And then uh, I had to go to the restroom, so I said, I'll be right back. And I came back, and he was off to the side. And I said, well, we left the girls. We were talking to these girls. They were interesting girls. And, I, and he said, yeah, but I'm not attracted to them, so why would I give them any of my energy? I, I've never understood that. How can men be so? I, don't, I, don't, I never understood that because all women see the way you treat women and the way you talk to women. And some guys try and turn on the charm when only when in the presence of a woman that they're attracted to, and the rest of the time they're like, I have no time for it. It's like, uh, these are, this is a guy that has never had a girlfriend. And, and he's like, uh, you know, and asking me advice about it. And, and he's completely ignoring women. And of course, you may not, this might be, not be the woman for you uh, in, that you're attracted to, but they're women. And that concept of, of men like turning, trying to turn it on and, and, for, and being a guy only around women that are, um, uh, they're attracted to, that's why I say they're all my girls. They're all my girls. I treat, uh, you know, I, I delight in them all because they'll delight in you. And, uh, and I got into an elevator in Las Vegas and, uh, and I walked into the elevator and the elevator was going down. We're on the 30th floor or whatever. And these two women, maybe 60 years old, dressed, lipstick, hair done, sparkling hair. And there are these nice gowns and stuff that I'm like, hello, ladies. I said, uh, what's the occasion tonight? And you, you look so fantastic, red lipstick, I love it. And they said, uh, and these women lit up. And they said, well, we're going, we're, we have a party where we're going to meet our husbands downstairs and I said listen ladies cancel uh, call your husband tell him you're sick and come party with me instead and it was these women were shining and not once did they ever think that I was serious or they was trying to pick them up or uh, but it's it's the concept of making women feel uh, in my in my presence at least I'm gonna see you in a certain way I'm gonna, you're gonna be beautiful if you hang with me because I'm gonna speak it I'm gonna see it and so uh, they're all my girls, even those six-year-old women, even the waitress bringing me eggs. You look fantastic, and I like it. It's like that whole concept of putting yourself into the... I could go on about that, but does it make sense what, how I'm trying to explain it? Yeah, what I take away from it is um, 
I think two things are happening in that, that sort of dynamic is the first is you're acting almost as an ambassador, mm -hmm. right? Of men, right? Yeah, I like that. It's kind of like, Hey, I'm, I will, I'll do my part for everyone. <laughs> kind of, you know, I am an ambassador of men and I inspire you to be the ambassador of women. That's, That's a me. great way yeah. of saying it because I've always felt like, uh, I've always felt like in all your interactions, uh, when I'm thinking of a woman, in all her interactions with men, there might be like abuse or abandonment or betrayal or just you know, games and stuff. Like that. And I do have a very strong feeling that, you know what, at, at least here, I will do my best to be representative of men yeah. and say, you know what, there is a possibility of something better. And so show up too, girl. Show up and maximally beautiful because I'm going to see you that way. Mm -hmm. and, and it's that whole, I'll call myself to the higher standard and I'll... That's a great of saying. Yeah. Great way of saying. Best of men. So, guys are wondering, like, what can I do next? You do not need to even, like, we say, stop today and ask yourself, uh, who am I today? What do I want my life to look like? If you do not know the answer to what, what your passion is or what you're passionate about, then at least what you can do, and it's very practical, is stop doing what you don't love. If there are things in your life you do not love, stop doing them, renouncing them, renounce them, get rid of them. Uh, like Zan says, stop making your parents feel comfortable. Uh, get rid of your TV if you're not really loving it. Get rid of your car if you don't really need it. And by, by renouncing things and clearing clearing the air, now you have a lot more space and energy to, to, to try to find what you're really passionate about and, and find your way. You know, guys are looking for an answer and they're looking for a solution. So they will pay money for a mm -hmm. seminar or they'll read a book or they'll do this or do that. And uh, the great thing is, is, is the mystery that we're all seeking. We should never be seeking answers. We should only be seeking the mystery. And, uh, and if guys really want change, like they say they do, uh, it's, it's not enough to just read another book. If, if men want to change, if they really do, then great things are needed. Great s steps are needed. Huge steps. You know, the way I say it is like every great life has had in it a great renunciation. There's no way around it. It's the way it is. You have to renounce. You have to renounce the things that you, like, like Hans says, the things you do not love. Like, if not now, then when? Today, they need to be renounced. And, and when men make that bold step and say, you know what, no more, no more, their life will change. And instantly, women will say, whoa, there's something about that guy. They're instantly more attractive without layering anything on. So to me, um, if they want change, uh, you have to renounce everything. That's how it goes. I don't mean your stuff. Your job, the things that are that you do not love. It's funny. I, I have a, a friend and colleague, and somewhat spiritual. And what he believes is that you only you, you only change once you've hit sort of the uh, the precipice of an epiphany, is the way that he puts it. And once you've suffered enough, and you say no more, mm -hmm. right? And you won't tolerate even a moment of that same suffrage, right? whether it's your job or your unsuccessful habits or whatever the case may be. But the way that he also interprets it as um, even if you're, you know, you're, you're not living your ambition or you're, you're trying to do something, but you're just not there yet. You shouldn't be down on yourself. It's yeah. kind of like you're just, you're, you're almost full of suffering. Yeah. <laughs> you're almost there. It's like just a little more, you know. Um, but I think it's really, really true and really relevant. It's yeah. like if you're suffering, it's, it's the choice as you put yeah. it, right? It's I, I it's true. I see in many guys that they need like some kind of pain before they really make a change. And I don't think it's necessary at all. I don't think it's necessary at all. I never had it. I just I, I just I just I never settled. I never settled. And so I wasn't doing what I was doing now, but I was happy. But and you, you just find your path. And but the last thing you said, I, I think is really important is that ease in the light. That ease in the light in the journey, because as soon as you, as soon as you make a choice, as soon as you announce a change, uh, you're already, you're already arrived. You've already arrived, and and ease in the light in that journey. Meaning, if you make a, a, a choice, a commitment, if you announce it to the world now, because you're already aspiring to more excellence in your life, you can forgive all of your mistakes. There's nothing wrong anymore. You can forgive all of your mistakes, and so ease in the light in that journey. It's it's an important part of of of, of the message both in the interactions with women, but also in your own learning. Mm -hmm. To stop beating yourself up, because you're already aspiring to more excellence. Yeah, and to trust the process you've embarked on. It's yes. a great thing. Mm -hmm. you'll, be, you'll, you'll be on this your whole life, and uh, it's, it's relaxing to the arms of life, and then 
and, and, and trust that you're, you're doing something that's okay, that's good. And, and the answers, uh, stop yeah. seeking the answers and start seeing the, seeking the mystery, and only the mystery, the, what fascinates you, head toward that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. All right, well, thank you for tuning in. This is Devin from The Art of Heart, and this was The Men's Room.